Hello guys, we got to talk about mayonnaise. Yes, mayonnaise. I was in the grocery store and I was looking for the brand store mayonnaise. Yes, I am a cheapskate. So I noticed that all the cheap mayo was sold out. Usually there are two shelves filled with them. Now there are only the more expensive mayonnaise brands left. So I had to buy the more expensive one. So I looked into the matter when I got home. So normally you would take this as a good sign as these mayonnaise are flying off the shelves. That means business is good. But in this case, it has a different reason. And it turns out one of the ingredients, sunflower oil, is mainly imported from Ukraine. To make matters worse, the Chinese are buying up all sunflower oil. So sunflower oil is becoming more rare and as a result the price of sunflower oil is going through the roof. So mayonnaise manufacturers are having a hard time producing mayonnaise at current prices, as it's not profitable. And people are still wondering if you're heading towards a recession. You can mess with a lot of things man, but you don't mess around with a man's mayonnaise. All jokes aside, my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine. So what signs can there be to spot a recession? You need to pay attention to consumers, are consumers spending less? Consumers reducing spending lowers GDP, because consumers make up for 70% of the GDP. If consumers spend less than they did last year, you have negative growth. If you got two quarters of negative growth in a row, bam, you are in a recession. The US just reported their first negative growth quarter of GDP. Caddy Wood thinks Europe is already in a recession. Also pay attention to the bank earnings. Are people saving more money into their bank account? Let's check Disney. What forecast is Disney delivering? Are they expecting people to spend more money going forward or are they already starting to see consumers pulling back? The more companies say consumers are pulling back, the higher the chance of a recession. So what about inflation? The money printers keep going brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
gold always had a premium over silver and is mostly used as a monetary metal. Silver is both an industrial metal as it's cheaper to use and the monetary metal. And its price performance is more dependent on economic activity. Silver is also much more volatile than gold. But if you look here at the gold to silver ratio, currently the ratio sits at 80 ounces of silver equivalent to 1 ounce of gold. This is after the ratio spiked to new highs during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the ratio is a bit high to invest in gold in my opinion and silver really did make a killing during the last inflation. Real estate. In the recession of 2008, divorces were up. So many houses were up for sale. But of course there are way less potential buyers in the recession and there is more pressure on the sellers as they might have lost their jobs and can't make their mortgage payments. And are forced to sell. So that's where the advantage as an investor comes into play. As there are some steals to be made. Definitely if you can find some off-market deals. You can also look into rates like Realty if you don't want to invest in the time to manage physical buildings. They also have the highest quality tenants as the people who rent from them are large corporations and businesses. So here's one investment you did not expect to be in this list. Treasury bonds. When people are looking for safe things to invest in, when there is some kind of crisis, they flock to bonds. So investing into an ETF like TLT, which tracks long-term US Treasury bonds, might be a good hedge. But it depends if the interest rates will go up or remain low. If you predict interest rates to rise in the future, it is best to avoid long-term bonds such as TLT, which is a 20-year-old treasury bond. That could lock into a lower interest rate. However, if you believe interest rates will fall, then it makes sense to invest in an ETF like the TLT. The European Central Bank stated that it will not increase interest rates yet. And if it does, it will be a gradual move. So if the war in Ukraine drags out, they might need to increase rates. We are all hoping the war will end soon, but it could continue for years. But it's impossible to tell. Here are some recession-proof stocks. Stocks that keep performing well are usually stocks like McDonald's. People will avoid costly restaurants but still want to take nagging kids out and McDonald's will not cost them a kidney. People are also looking out for discounts and bargains, so stocks like Walmart and Groupon will do great. Companies that sell escapism will do great. Examples Netflix or Hasbro, which is a toy manufacturer. But also sin companies like tobacco and alcohol manufacturer will do good. Likely because emotions and stress are high when the economy and the markets are low. Causing consumers to seek relief through other means. Apple remains to do great in a recession. Warren Buffett agrees as he has a 5 portfolio stake with his ETF Berkshire Hathaway. Don't forget to look in, into healthcare stocks like Johnson & Johnson as healthcare after Covid is doing great and our aging population and demand for medical attention fortify this industry even more. And definitely don't forget the energy companies like Chevron or ExxonMobil. If any good dip presents itself I will take advantage of that as I'm still very bullish on Tesla and Palantir so can't wait to get them at bargain prices. I'm also keeping my eye on crypto projects like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm not a financial advisor. Do not take anything as financial advice ever as these are my personal opinions. Do your own research before investing. Hope to see you at the other end of the recession. Best of luck, I'm Kowalt.